Hi, my name is Corey Johnson with DCS, and in today's walkthrough video, we're going to be going over measurement spec modes. In this video, we got two examples for you. The first example is going to be when to use relative as your spec mode, and the second example will be when to use absolute as your spec mode. So we'll get right into the first example, which is going to be a point-to-point -point gap measure. In this case, we have a front door and a rear door that has a six and a half mil nominal gap, and we want to check it to plus or minus one millimeter. So first we'll take a look at how to set this measurement up using relative spec mode. Spec mode is going to be checked down here in the middle, the lower middle here. We're going to say relative. And then as you can see, just to the right of that, our nominal condition is six and a half mils, which looks good. And then from there, all we have to do is enter in the upper and lower spec limits of plus or minus one. Now we're going to take a look at how to set up the same measurement using absolute as your spec mode. Now the only difference between these two measurements is going to be our spec mode, we're going to select absolute instead of relative. You can see our nominal gap is still the same. And now comes the difference between relative and absolute. Using relative, you can see I entered plus or minus one millimeters. Now relative spec mode will auto calculate and display your results relative to the nominal gap. In this case, six and a half mils. For absolute spec mode, that auto calculation is not going to happen. So we're going to have to do it ourselves. And what I mean by that is here in red or in the drawing file there in the middle, our nominal gap is six and a half and we want to check to plus or minus one. So we just got to do that math ourselves. So effectively, we just have to add one and subtract one from six and a half mils. So that'll be our upper and lower spec limit, which is going to be seven and a half for the upper and five and a half for the lower. Now, important to point out that both of these measurements will display the exact same results, which we'll get to in a second when we review the model. But for the simple reason that relative will auto-calculate uh, relative to your nominal gap and display your results, uh, we recommend using relative for any type of these, these measures, like a gap measure, or the same would be uh, for like a flush measure as well. So let's pop open the model really quick. And you can see here in the background, I got that measurement highlighted. So I'm just going to pop this one open. And the first measurement we're looking at here is the spec mode relative, plus or minus one. And you can see our range is 3.21, total out just over 6%. And now I'm going to toggle over. As you can see, none of the data changed, which is good. I'm going to pop this measurement open. And this is our absolute spec mode with our upper and lower limits being seven and a half and five and a half respectively. Because we set it up correctly and we did the calculation ourselves for the absolute spec mode, you can see that our data is exactly the same. Estimated range 3.21 and out of spec just over 6%. So you can use either or spec mode uh, in that case, but for the simple fact that the Relative spec mode will do the auto calculate for you. Again, we just recommend you use that. Now let's take a look at a third measurement. This is still the same gap condition, front door to rear door, same points we're using, but you can see that all of this is red, which is not great. And I'm gonna pop this measurement open. And what we got going on here, is again, still the same points. Uh, we have absolute as our spec mode, still the same nominal condition, but we got absolute as a spec mode and we're using plus or minus one millimeter as the upper and lower limit. Now let's go back to the slides and figure out why that would be an issue. So here's that bad result, that all red result. And the first thing we wanna focus on here is that six and a half millimeter, that mean which is our nominal gap. And you can see it's displaying our variation 
you know, kind of plus or minus that with a low about, you know, 4.9 and high about 8.1. But for this measurement, we used absolute as the spec mode. So it's not auto calculating relative to that six and a half mil nominal gap. So what you kind of have to visualize here is you can see I got, you know, six, five, four, here would be three, two, one, zero would be about there. And we're using absolute as a spec mode, and then we put plus or minus one as our upper and lower limit. So in reality, our limits are over here, and our data is over here to the right. So our data is well outside the goalposts, which is why everything is red. So just watch out for that um, and kind of ensure that when after selecting the right spec mode that you are also using the right spec limits. So now we'll move on to a circle interference measure and make the case of when it is a good idea to use absolute as your spec mode. In this case, we have a 10 millimeter hole and an eight and a half mil pin that we wanna see if it fits into that hole. And we're gonna do that by using a circle interference measure. Now, important to point out that radially speaking, we have 0.75 millimeters of clearance between the pin and the hole, 1.5 overall, uh, but radially 0.75, which will come up here in a second. So let's take a look at this measurement using spec mode absolute. As you can see up here in the features and targets, I'm sorry, objects and targets, we have 10 mils hole, eight and a half mil pin. And our spec mode is absolute. And you can see that current nominal condition because this measurement is displaying the nominal condition radially, which is what I alluded to earlier with that 0 0.75. And after we have that selected, we just want to make our lower spec zero. And what this is going to do is display the data, anything under zero is going to be a crashing or an interference condition, and it's going to display the data red. And you're going to know if it's interfering, and if so, by how much. So now let's take a look at the same measurement using relative. Still the same whole pin features that we're using here. The only difference is spec mode is now relative. Our nominal radial condition is still 0 0.75. But because we're using relative, it's gonna display the data relative to that 0.75. So we have to actually make our lower spec negative 0.75. And thus any result lower than that would be an interference condition and it would display a red result. But for the simple fact that when doing this kind of measure and you use the absolute spec mode, you can always just set your lower spec to zero and it's kind of doesn't matter what the nominal clearance between the hole and the pin are. Uh, just using absolute as your spec mode and lower spec zero, anything that is under zero is gonna show a red or a crashing condition and it's just easier in one less step. Uh, so for that reason, we recommend using absolute as the spec mode when doing a measurement like this for like a circle interference measure. Um, and before we jump to the model, um, notice that our upper spec for both of these measures is actually unchecked. Uh, I didn't even bother entering a value. Uh, and that's because it's kind of irrelevant for this kind of measures. Um, the upper spec would just check, you know, more clearance or, or distance between the hole and the pin, which we really don't care about. It's not the purpose of the circle interference measure. It's really just to determine a crashing condition, which we're only needing the lower spec, uh, the lower limit to check that condition. So for that reason, upper spec is actually unchecked because it's kind of irrelevant. So we're going to get back to the model here. And we're going to look at this measurement. This is that first circle interference measurement with absolute is the spec mode, lower spec set to zero. And as you can see, we're out of spec about 12% of the time. For those maybe unfamiliar with this type of measurement, all this is saying is that roughly 12% of the time, that pin is going to interfere with that hole 12% of the time. Now I'm gonna to toggle to the next measurement here. 
and open that up. And this is the second measure, measurement we just showed with spec mode relative in the lower spec at negative 0.75. And as you can see, we're still out of spec 12 point, you know, zero three percent of the time. So it's the same thing. Um, again, you can just like the get measures, you can use either or, um, but sometimes it's easier to use one or the other, depending on the, on the kind of measurement or the type of information you're looking to get out of the measurement. So just like the other example, we're going to take a look at a third measurement where everything is red. And as you can see here, Yep, everything's red. I'm going to pop open this measurement and you can see that my spec mode, it's still the same whole pen, still a 10 mil hole, eight and a half mil pen, same features used. My spec mode is relative, but my lower spec is zero, which is producing this red result. So we're going to go back to the slide and kind of go over why that would be the case. So here's that red result. And as you can see, our LSL, our lower spec limit, which is what we're using to determine that crashing condition, is all the way over here on the right. And that LSL is actually, if you can see this estimated high where it says 0.77, this line is actually at 0 0.75, which is nominally the clearance between the radial clearance between the hole and the pin. Now, this measurement is using the spec mode relative, but the lower spec is zero. So let's think about this for a second. If you have zero as your lower spec, and as we mentioned before, relative is gonna auto-calculate relative to the nominal condition. So if you're doing zero relative to a nominal clearance of 0 0.75, the way the software is looking at this is basically 0.75 minus zero, that lower limit, well, that's 0.75 which is why you see your LSL here. And if that if your limit is at the nominal condition, naturally, once you add any type of variation, it's going to be under that threshold, thus producing an, you know, an all red result, which is what we're seeing here. So it's always important just to kind of think of what type of measurement you're using, uh, what you're looking to get out of that measurement and what's important. Um, and that should help dictate uh, you know, what spec mode you should be using um, and also what your upper and lower limits should be. It's always a case-by-case -case basis, um, but I hope this video at least sheds some light on the appropriate spec mode to use given what measurement maybe you are trying to create. So I hope this video helps. I thank you all for watching and have a great day.